Hello Cancer and welcome to your monthly horoscope for November for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you a broad overview of what to expect but please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in forensic detail all the key dates and influences particularly relevant to your sign. Now your ruler is the Moon so the Moon's progress is critical to your uh, prospects and of course on the 8th we have a mighty total lunar eclipse and that for you is in the sector of your future hopes but it is crested next to Uranus the planet of restlessness which itself is also in a punishing right angle with Saturn which has been going on for the last two years but you know outside of that the Sun along with Venus is in a conjunction for the first 10 days Mercury is also there too in the sign of Scorpio which is your sister water sign and the fifth house is where we can really be expressive. It's also where we can be social, we can interact, we can demonstrate to people our talents and flair and also for some people this can be critical in terms of uh, your love life. It just depends of course on your unique circumstances so I can't wait to tell you about that. Also Jupiter may be in retrograde through to the 23rd but it is in one of its two home zones and it is in a brilliant angle with Pluto the planet of transformation in your sector of relating and that could be very important in feeding in to the prospects that you have with that fifth house energy in Scorpio. Now if you would like to understand what year 2023 will hold for you and uh, ascend above zodiac astrology, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data of time, date and place of birth, I can give you your forecast for next year. But if you order in 2022, the rest of this year three, plus your roadmap, your life forecast in terms of your character analysis. This helps you to understand the repeating patterns in your life. Some of them may be tricky, but others can help you to get a closer understanding of your potential. And there's 30% off in my special package. Please see the link below. Also, if you are new to my channel, I'd be grateful if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for your uh, support. It really is appreciated. So Cancer, having the Sun and Venus and Mercury all in your sector of self-expression is a real uh, wonderful combination, particularly the fact that the Sun and Venus are very closely tethered together. Now in traditional astrology, it is said that the Sun can almost dominate Venus to the point that Venus loses its identity. But modern astrologers tend to think that the Sun can amplify Venus. So if you do want to uh, connect with others and show people that you can be great fun, uh, very entertaining in your approach, very engaging with others, this is certainly a great time to think of how to do so. But of course, this all builds up to that critical lunar eclipse, total lunar eclipse of the 8th. And within that, the Sun is actually conjunct Mercury. If there is an idea that really excites you and you feel passionate about over the next six months, this gives you an, a, a real chance to grapple with that idea in a really serious way. It's just that because Mars, the planet of drive and passion, is locked in your 12th house and in a right angle with Neptune and Mars is in a retrograde for the whole of this month, it may mean that you need to overcome some inner doubts or if you have been uh, working your way through some delicate or painful issues from your past, these may still be quite to the fore throughout this month. But if there is an opportunity to share how you feel or to spend time with people that lift your spirits or share your credo, this is certainly a time to go for it. But the implication on this particular event, the lunar eclipse, is that Saturn and Uranus, which have been so dominant the last couple of years, 
are really saying to you that whatever your highest hopes are, they have to be funded. But it may see you breaking away from situations, people, or even financial security that you have been very invested in in the past. So it's asking you almost to take a walk into the unknown just at the point when you could in some ways be feeling rather delicate. But Jupiter, also in retrograde through to the 23rd, is forging that impressive angle with Pluto. Pluto in the seventh house has transformed your relationships hugely since 2008. It, it's possible that some people, some really significant people, have left your life. But also Jupiter in the ninth house is very much about the spiritual dimension in the sign of Pisces. And it's about adventure. So if there are people that you're working towards new alliances with, that you really feel that you can share something that's very sparking and energizing, this can help you to overcome the leaving behind that Mars and Neptune square may be making you much more conscious of, or the square between Uranus and Saturn is pushing you to perhaps break the chains of security in some ways in order to embrace the type of future that really would be exciting for you. Now on the 16th and 17th, Venus and Mercury move into a new home, the sign of Sagittarius. Now for you, this is a practical area and with the sun moving there on the 22nd, the new moon on the 23rd, Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius, going direct on the 23rd too, a lot of activity around this sixth house, which is about the details. It's about functions, efficiencies, purity. So all the talent or ideas that you're manifesting in the start of this month need to now be built into something that will become more substantive and lasting. And it is a case of if you look after the details, the big picture will build up in a way which is really important to you. So as you come to the end of the month and Jupiter does end that retrograde, I feel that even if you are uh, making sure that some of the fundamentals in your world are working that much better, you're looking at things around your physical health, your diet, your exercise regime, perhaps even the type of work you do, whether it gives you a sense of personal satisfaction or not. I think what's feeding into that is a real craving for a sense of feeling alive and inspired and engaged because your life has been a lot to do with nurture and protectiveness but has it also at times been a lot to do with defensiveness? And I think really what this month is asking you to do is to take the, the strands in your situation which are worth going for and becoming more philosophical about some of those that may break down. And if some kind of reorganization is needed towards the end of this month, go through it on a step-by-step, -step, very systematic basis and that gives you the platform preparing you to end this year, but also venture into 2023 on the type of form that can really see you prosper in the new year.